Stray. 10 out of 10 on Steam. 8 out of 10 on Game Informer. And a game that others have probably told you by now that you can't miss out on. So what is it? What is Stray? Well, you're a cat. That is the entire marketing scheme that the Stray team has went with. The team that made it had an idea. They're going to create a game where you, the player, are a cat. You do cat things. You run around like a cat. You have paw prints. You have a tail. You're cute. You're furry. They thought, hey, you know what? People like cats. What if they were a cat? And you know what? It worked. A ton of people have bought this game. There's a ton of hype over it. And if there wasn't before the game was released, there's a ton of hype now. That's why I bought it. That's why others bought it. And I'm sure you're probably watching this video right now to see why others bought it. Why are people buying this game that is only about a cat? Cats are cool. They're silent. They're careful. They're methodical. Cats are also highly chaotic and reckless. And that is what makes a good character. At least it can. See, here's the thing about the character in Stray. Again, you're a cat. You're an orange tabby cat. You're cute. You're flexible. You can play with your friends. But the cat is silent. I mean, it's a cat. There's no inner monologues. There's no inner English. There are no inner thoughts. No cat vision. No anything like that. There's nothing like that. There's nothing similar to your cat talking to you. The most communication you can do as the main character is meow. Yeah, there's a specific button that is just for meowing. And it's amazing. The meow is how your character can communicate. Are you stuck? Meow. You want to say hi to someone? Meow. You want to meow? Then you meow. You can do it as many times as you want. And yes, there is variation with the cat meows. There are different meows. There's, I think, four or five of them. And they all sound different. They all have their own different tone and attitude. And it's great. You have your own personal communication. The other things are your cat, of course. So there, you can purr. You hiss. You pant. There's a lot of nonverbal communication going on in this game. But it still feels like the main character is a main character. Even with so much nonverbal communication, there's a lot of emotion in the eyes of the cat. There's different purposes in the movements, in the meows. Every time you move, you know your character is moving to accomplish something. The motivations, those change with each setting. You start... In this beautiful lush green area, there are other cats around there. You go, you hang out with them, you do your thing, and then the motivations change with each setting change. You can start by just following cats, uh, then you get hurt, you have to find a way around. Sometimes your motivation is just to simply explore. Jump on things, move around, do things like that. The Dead City has you collecting energy drinks and random keys to unlock things. I mean, at one point in the game... I spent 30 minutes exploring across rooftops, bars, alleys, across this cyberpunk s city in order to, and I'm not kidding here, collect something to turn into a market vendor to exchange electrical wire, and then I gave that electrical wire to a robot grandma so she could knit me a cat a poncho. I did that. I spent 30 minutes looking for that stuff so I could get a poncho. And I enjoyed it. The point is, the character is you. You make the choices. You create these emotional impacts and emotional motivations while being a nonverbal cat. They, the team does a good job of creating a bond with a character that doesn't speak. It reminds me a lot of Doom with less bloodshed. You make the choices. You do the things whether you want to or not. You don't have to get your cat, cat poncho, but who wouldn't want a cat poncho? But the point is you never feel like you don't have a personality, even as a cat. So the setting. Again, the game does not shy away from the fact that you are a cat. 
everything is meant to be looked at through feline eyes. And nothing does that so well than the sheer size of how big the world is. Everything is big. And when you think about our world, as humans, things are not so large. I mean, there, there are, of course, large things, but there, you know, tables aren't that big, chairs aren't that big, things, bottles aren't that big. But in the game, since you're a cat, they are large. Sometimes you come across a ledge. The ledge is small, but to the cat you are, you hop up on it and you walk right on. You need to look up to climb. I mean, there's air conditioners, there's gates, there's windows. There are other things that we see every day and we ignore because they're part of our world normally that in this game, your character use them as tools. You use these air conditioners to climb up a building. You use these windows to get in and out of places that the doors are locked. The world is built to explore. It starts you in this beautiful, lush, green area. There's rain. The water looks great. The cat looks great. The overall atmosphere of where you start is its just calm. It's serene. You feel good. You start in this rainy sewage drain with three other cats and it just feels right you just feel like you're supposed to be there as a cat it's a it's beautiful it's wonderful so you have your little pack of cats you start you know the game gives you a tutorial you're jumping up on things you're going over pipes you're doing all this stuff and those other cats are equally as cute by the way but again the game wants you to explore your feline side it actively encourages it you can go up to these cats, you can play with them. You pull their tails, you lick their face, you wrestle, you do all this stuff, and then you snuggle up and you sleep with them. After you sleep on a cardboard box, you go out and you explore. Okay, the game is all about exploration. There's so many things to see, there's so many things to knock over, to jump on. The verticality in it is insane. It is set in a cyberpunk world, of course, so... Anything cyberpunk is going to have a lot of verticality because the cyberpunk setting is all about you know, creating space in an area that you don't have space in. So they build up. That's the point. The cyberpunk desolate wasteland that you're in brings a whole new dynamic to the table. I mean, in, in the slums, you have the things to collect. We talked about that robot grandma earlier. That's part of the slums. You collect these things. And you can literally scale from the street to the rooftop in like 10 seconds or less by just jumping on awnings and air conditioners and banisters and wood planks and pipes. And it, it is awesome. And it's encouraged. It's smooth. It's fun. It looks fantastic. It feels fantastic. You can hold space and you chain your jumps together like it's one fluid movement. And not only... Does the game want you to explore, but you as the player, you want to explore. You want to go up this building. You want to see what you're looking at because it looks good. There's something new to find around every corner. I mean, I, I walked into a library on the fourth floor of a building, played a piano, and then fell asleep in a bookshelf because that is exactly what a cat would do. You're going to find something to do. In each new area in each new building on a rooftop you can sleep with a robot you can cuddle up with a robot there's just something to do everywhere you go sometimes it's a memory for the robot on your back sometimes it's scratching on a bench seat because you're a cat and other times it's just jumping on things there's gonna be something for you to do everywhere and we're gonna get into the story I have not finished the game I played for about two and a half hours uh, but that's good, because this is a spoiler-free review. So the story, so far, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of it. It's a mystery. All right, you start in that outside, lush green world. You fall into this damp and dark underground called the Dead City, which is appropriate, because, yeah, it's dead. You encounter the main enemies, Xerox. They're little pink blobs that apparently eat everything. Uh, it's kind of like a science experiment gone wrong. I wrote in my notebook that they are Cyclopses because they look like Cyclopses. But you meet some new friends, a robot called B12. You carry him on your back. There's a samurai robot. There's a grandma robot. Uh, it's all AIs. Humans are apparently gone. And the main point is your robot talks to you. 
says that its mission it, it, it lost its memory so your its mission which by extension is your mission is to open the dome that the cyberpunk world is set in and release the ar robots free to the outside world you got to work your way up you start in the dead city you go up to the slums then you go up to the mid city so on so forth you collect robot memories of a scientist that the robot spent time with he lost his memory so he can't remember it too well he has no name or anything like that but he has his mission most of the city is uninhabitable you navigate the dangerous parts because you as a cat can humans are mentioned but they're long gone and the gameplay is mainly puzzle solving you have to do things like move electrical cords and switches you gotta use your robot to activate and deactivate gates. You have to make paths to get across long, never-ending alleys. But the coolest thing is that the solution to these puzzles are all the things a cat would do. Knocking over a paint can to break glass. Pushing a plank over. Jumping on a pile of boxes in order to knock them out and get a journal. It's, it's all things that make sense for you to do as a cat. You're not doing some kind of amazing feat. You're just being a cat. The sounds in this game? Ah, wonderful. Just listen. So in conclusion, you're a cat. Listen, that's the main story. That's the main point. The setting is there. The story is there. The robots are there. Cyberpunk world is there. Your partner is there. You feel for them. You have an emotional connection. You care for them. But the first and most important thing about Stray is you are a cat. You do cat things. You scratch furniture. You nuzzle robots. You climb air conditioners and fences and banisters. You jump like a cat. You crawl under things. You leave cute little paw prints everywhere. You do things that a cat would do and the game wants you to. They give you a lot of opportunities to do these things because the game does not want you to forget that you are a cat. So slow down, take a nap, and enjoy being a four-legged feline in a beautiful world. 10 out of 10 meows.